to Warner Murphy Show. That's what's up. That's what's up to Warner Murphy Show. That's what's up to Warner Murphy Show. That's what's up the to Warner Murphy Show. In the last four years, you've seen the true colors of everybody that didn't like us. So I, I'm not gonna say names right now. But only thing I'm gonna say is, you better hope your ass don't get in trouble. And you need Murphy to get you out of it. That's what's up, the Tawana Murphy show. When you got the two in, you want the real in your host. What's going on, man? She knows the most. Bitch, and Mitch South, tune in, cause the diva is on. And good evening, you're watching the Tawana Murphy Show right here on SVP TV, Comcast 17, and Comcast 31. You can also watch the Tawana Murphy Show on Apple TV, Amazon Prime, Roku, On Demand, Facebook Live and YouTube Live. Happy Thursday to everybody. We have an amazing show for you. And of course, we are coming up on general elections. And we know that general elections are tough right now. We got a whole lot of judges that's running. We got a whole lot of state representatives that's running. We have uh, registered deeds that's running. We have what? Shelby County Clerk's offices that's running. So we have elections after elections. And the next two years will be elections. So this year and next year will be elections. So we have to, every three months is something happening. Either, either it's a primary or it's a, a general election. We, I stress this all the time. I always stress you have to vote. You have to vote. Voting is important. No matter how you see it, some people say, I don't want to vote. I don't have to vote. It, it ain't doing nothing. It ain't changing nothing. But look at what we're dealing with right now. The topic of the show tonight is education. Our kids are failing. The system is failing our children. Earlier day, I spoke with a few commissioners and I asked a question and I said, what happened with those TCAP test scores? There's, they scared to put those test scores out. Know why? Because we are low. It is embarrassing. Those scores are embarrassing. Those TCAP scores are embarrassing. They're so embarrassing that nobody wants to put them out. Now, of course, many of y'all know I have a reading program. This is my third year with Project Let's Read. Sign-ups been all week this week because we pushed it back another week because we had some pipes to bust in the, in the women's bathroom. So they're fixing it this week. So classes will start next week for Project Let's Read. I have sign-ups. I've been there all week signing up kids to come for my summer reading camp. The summer reading camp is for Memphis and West Memphis. But of course, the location is in West Memphis. And you know why the location is in West Memphis? Because West Memphis took it immediately. They didn't give me any hesitation. They didn't talk back. When I told them what I wanted to do, they was like, they was on board immediately. Of course, Memphis gave me a hard time. And they shouldn't have given me a hard time for the mere fact that our kids, what is it, 11%? And I think it's lower than that. The last test scores that came out, I think it was only 11% of our kids passed that TCAP test. And now they back out again, and I think it's lower than that. The graduation rate is low. Our kids are failing the second grade for the first, second, third time. Second, third time. I said first, yeah, because some, some just fail and some failing again because they haven't reached the standards. Before we had that No Child Left Behind Act, and with that No Child Left Behind Act, they was passing the kids for the mere fact that they were too old to be in the second grade. Some of these kids gonna be 15, still in the second grade. Now, did the parents fail us? Did they fail the children? Or did the teachers fail the children? We're trying to figure out what is the problem here? Why come our kids are not learning? Now, some of the parents that I've spoken to have put their kids in summer camps, summer church camps, is summer church camps helping your kids learn? Some of y'all kids cannot read, but you're running them to a summer church camp. And I understand summer church camp is supposed to be good. YMCA's where they play, that's good for the kids for the summer. But if your kid can't read or write, why are they even in a, a, a uh, YMCA? Or why are they in a church summer camp? They're not teaching them to read or write or do math. And half our kids are failing. Yesterday, I spoke with a parent. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. It was a teacher at MLK Preparatory School in Frazier. 
And she asked me to go pull the story about the children that graduated from MLK Preparatory School in Frazier. There were eight children that was posted on the cover of that story. I read the story in its entirety. I seen some pictures of some of the seniors that's playing at the picnic in the story. But some of those seniors in those picnics in the story did not pass, they didn't graduate. Reportedly or allegedly only eight Seniors graduated from MLK Preparatory School in Frazier. Allegedly, reportedly, eight high school kids. Somebody said to me, well, to one of their classes, they're not low anyway. They don't have no class anyway. They, they low anyway. They, they don't have a lot of kids in there. They have 500 kids registered. And only eight graduated from MLK Preparatory School Academy in Frazier. Looks can be deceiving. Oftentimes they would throw a story out there and make us believe that they had 15, 100, 100 kids graduate and walk across the stage, but in reality, only eight, allegedly only eight graduated from that school until they proved me wrong. That's what the teacher told me. Now she said she would call in because she was on the road. So she said she would call in and she doesn't mind telling what's going on over there at MLK. See what we do is we uh, allow people to come in and, 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 and get these positions that's not qualified for the position. We got people in positions over there that's not qualified for the position. You got people, you giving people a position that don't even know what it entitles. But yet and still, our kids are failing. They failing. And you think that's cute? Some of my parents think that's cute? I seen a video of a seven year old in a video rapping and cussing but didn't even know his ABCs, couldn't even spell his name and couldn't tie his shoes, but he's seven. No, every rap song there is, seven. I seen an eight-year-old that wrote every name brand shoe there was. They, the mama got the baby dressed from the Nikes from the head to the toe, but he can't spell his name. What good is rewarding a kid with Nikes and, and games and, high, and, and Nintendo Switches and things of that nature when they can't even spell. They don't know their colors. They can't read, but you're rewarding them. So this is the kind of mentality that we're dealing with. So you wonder why sometimes all of our, how our kids are failing. It's not just the teachers half teaching, it's the parents that accepting this foolishness. Yeah, I'm blaming it on the parents accepting the foolishness because they think that's cool that they little seven, they seven, eight, nine, ten year old can know every rap song there is but cannot spell their name and you think that's attractive? That's not attractive, that's foolery. It's foolery, you make me understand that. You make me understand why we got 12th graders that can't read at the second grade level. Make me understand that or smoking weed in the high school in, in the corridors. And then we have all these city officials standing up here with their nose stuck up in the air. Oh, our kids are going to do this, and our kids are going to do this, and I'm getting upset, y'all, I gotta calm down. Our kids is this, and we're gonna make sure our kids get the best education possible, because you're standing in front of the camera lying. You're sitting there with diabetes. And then when the cameras are off, I don't give a damn about them kids. Let them do what they want. That's what we see. That's what we see on a normal. So can't nobody come and say, Tawana picking up somebody else's story. Tawana ain't picking up nobody else's story because I've been doing this for three years. I've been teaching reading every summer for three years. I've brought, I, I've brought in our city officials to read to our children. 
So this is nothing. This is not nothing that I'm just doing because the stats are low. The T cap stats are low. I've been doing this for three years, and guess what? Every one of my students I have taught in the last two years have succeeded, which means I'm doing a good job. Which means my job is effective. I don't talk to talk. I walk to walk. I got a son, seven, reads at a ninth grade level, math is a ninth grade level. I don't talk to talk. I walk to walk. My son don't know nothing about no rap songs. If you ask him about a rap song, he gonna sing Paw Patrol. He knows nothing about rap because I don't allow him to listen to rap music. My song, No Sus Like Milky Milk. I don't even know what Milky Milk is, but it's, 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 it's taking the kids, educating the kids to drink milk for vitamin D and vitamin C or whatever the vitamin Z is in the, in the milk. But my, song, my son listens to rap songs like Milky Milk. I ain't know what Milky Milk is. But I, I heard it the other day because my kids, was, Ethan was listening to it in the house the other day. And they, him and Muffin would jump around like little natives. Uh, <laughs> Talking about some Milky Milk, Milky Milk, Milky Milk, Milky Milk. It's stuck in my head. I'm just saying. That's the kind of stuff my kids listen to. My kids don't know anything about rap music. Well, well Muff, Muff no blues. <laughs> Muff no blues. But she don't know anything about rap music. This is what we're dealing with. We can't even put our TCAP scores out there because they are too low. They so low, it is saddening. Now you calling me. Can, can we talk, Murphy? What can we do with your reading program? You didn't want the reading program when I offered it to you two years ago. You didn't want the reading program when I offered it to you a year ago. But now I got a successful reading program, and here you come asking me to help. I tried to help you. Memphis, you looked the other way when I tried to help. But I'm still helping because you can bring your child, your son, your daughter over to West Memphis. I had five Memphis kids sign up for the reading program yesterday. Now tomorrow I will be at the Roberta Jackson Community Center for signups from 11 to 3. Classes start Monday. Parents, it's up to you if you want your child to read. It's up to you if you want your child to know basic math. It's up to you if you want your child to have a, a better penmanship, better understanding of what they're doing, knowing sight words, knowing these, these kids don't even know what syllables are. But yet and still, y'all accept what you bring to your children. You allow your children to do whatever they want to do. Listen to whatever kind of songs they want to listen to and you buy them and give them all these elect expensive electronics. For what? For they can be dummies? I'm just, uh, y'all, I'm sorry. I just gotta call it how I see it. For what? So they can sit there and be dummies? Cause that's what we, that's what we looking at. That's what we looking at. Two second graders registered for my reading program the other day, failed the second grade twice. Not once, twice. One of the parents told me that they put their son in the summer program last year and he still failed. Now you still have to look at the, the you have to look at the statistics and the stats too because you have to some of these kids are raised by their grandparents. Some of these kids are in foster homes that come to my reading camp. So I nurture those children when they come to my reading camp. Our kids are failing. The system have already set our kids up for failure and yet we allow them to do this. We allow it. We accept what they're giving us. We accept it. It's okay that our kids can't read. It's okay to them that our kids don't know basic math. It's okay to them that our kids can't write or write in cursive. They don't even have a signature. But it's okay because the system have already designed our kids for failure. They've already designed them for failure. 
And guess what? We done fell right in line with them. We fell right in line with them. We allow them to control the mindset of our kids and the mindset of our teachers. Some of our teachers don't, they don't want to teach. They just want a paycheck. They just want a paycheck. They're not there to teach. They want a paycheck. It's very seldom, you, you will find just a handful of teachers that really care about their kids. A handful. Just a handful. Most teachers just walk in there because they want a check. A check. I'm an educator. That's what I do. I, I taught for over 10 years. But I get results. I get results because I'm one of those educators that care. No, I don't work in the school system. I taught college for 10 years. I taught at Anthem. I taught at Vatterock. I taught at National. And believe it or not, some of my parents couldn't even read when they got there. I had to help them pass their high school, uh, uh, their high school GEDs. I had to tutor them to help them pass their high school GEDs. That's what I did. And when I seen two years ago that there was a need because our kids, our kindergartners couldn't read and our first graders couldn't read, that is unacceptable. So why are we sending them to preschool? Like somebody said, we excited about our kids graduate from preschool, graduate from kindergarten. I'm excited. I'm one of the moms that cry. But I'm also one of the moms that's going to make sure my son knows. So during the pandemic, I didn't sit down on my son during the pandemic. During the pandemic, I taught my son. I taught my son. My son was in preschool knowing about octagons and pentagons and hexagons. He was past the triangle and the square and the rectangle. He was on octagons, pentagons, hexagons, cylinders. He, would, he knew third grade stuff in preschool. Because when I realized it was too easy for him, I had to step my game up. Some of my son's IQ tests was 110. Some of the test scores on my son's IQ test was 114. Another portion of my son's IQ test was 117, and another one was higher than that because they test them in different areas. My son is con considered almost a genius. And I believe if they test him again right now, he probably would score higher than what he scored before. We're on two number divisions, and he's seven. Two number divisions, and I have a seven year old. He's just in the first grade, going to the second. My son, tested on 11th grade level. He did a, a pretest the other day on, on body ethics and education. And when he finished the test, he missed one. On a 10th grade level, seven years old. My son studies ethics at seven. So I'm not one of those mothers that say, oh, I'm just going to let my son do whatever. I reward him when he needs to be rewarded. But my son don't listen to curse words, rap songs. He don't listen to that. My son is a kid. And even though he's highly intelligent, he's still a kid. And I will allow him to be a kid. But when it comes to education, I am strict on my son. I'm strict on him when it comes to education. He has to do his homework first. At first, he didn't lie to me, y'all. I don't tell y'all no lie, because Ethan's sneaky. Ethan's sneaky. He can lie. Ethan lied to me at first, and he told me, Mom, I ain't got no homework. The man had homework for a whole week. I ain't know the man had homework. I didn't ask the teacher, do he have homework? She said, girl, I sent the homework. I was wondering why his packet went in. I went and looked in his book bag, saying he didn't do none of the homework. Y'all know what I did? I sat down with him and gave him his packet. The boy finished that whole packet in 30 minutes.
and he had missed a whole week of homework. And when he turned it in, he had one wrong out of the whole packet. So education, what did we fail? We, the parents failed too. The parents, the teacher between the parents and the teachers. Some people say, yeah, education started at home, but you have to realize too, some of these parents are not educated. Some of these parents never even went to high school. So we have to look at that too. We have to look at the mentality of the parents. Mental. We got to look at what's going on mentally with the parents. And, and if it's mental with the parents, guess what? The kids going to follow on the kids because what they do reflects the kids. What I do reflects my son, reflects my daughter. Now, I don't let Ethan get away with stuff because I'm telling you, I, I, I'm good. With, I'm quick with these hands. He already know it. And if I can't get to him quick enough, I'm throwing a shoe. Whatever's in my way, it's going to get thrown at him. Because he already know I'm not playing with him. Eight kids. Eight kids graduated. Allegedly, let me put allegedly on it before they try to sue me. Allegedly, eight kids graduated from MLK Preparatory High School in Frazier. Allegedly, eight kids. Article looks good. We know a cover up when we see one. Y'all know we're stuff full of, full, of, full of bull crap. If you only got eight kids on that screen, where's the graduation? When all the kids, so this is a big graduation, where's it? Where is it? Where is it? One of the teachers told me, one of the teachers told me that worked there that only eight kids graduated from that school. TCAP scores are low, real low. They so, they so low, they embarrassing. Dr. Ray gonna have to answer for that. He's gonna have to answer for that. What are we doing wrong? What is the, what's the problem here? What are we doing wrong? Why are our kids failing? Oh, let's just keep the kids in bondage. Why don't you? If we can keep them as factory workers, so be it. Let's just keep them as factory workers. Let's keep them poor. Let's keep them there. Let's keep them where we have control over them. And you wonder why we got so much crime and violence in the city? You wonder why we got so much homelessness in the city? Why people can't get jobs? Well, people don't want jobs. You can get jobs right now. Well, people don't want jobs. You wonder? Crime and violence run rapid in our cities. And believe it or not, it all falls back on education, whether you want to pick it up or not, whether you want to say, oh, two, one, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I know exactly what I'm talking about. And yet still, y'all want to get, everybody got, everybody's like, oh, we just going to blame the parents. Y'all got to put the blame on somebody. No, you put the blame on you too. As teachers, you have failed. Some of you parents, you have failed. Shelby County School Board, y'all fail. So why do we have these people in place? Why do we keep voting these folk in place when they are not even, they, they, they don't care about our kids. I'm sorry. Can I be honest with y'all? They don't care about our kids. Because if they cared about our kids, we would do way better than what we're doing right now. Way better. I would drive from here to Kingdom Come to get my son to learn. I applaud the parents that came from Memphis uh, 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 Tuesday to sign their child up for Project Let's Read because she said, I put my son in some program and he still failed. So let me try something different, Miss Murphy. Let me put my child over here with you and see if he is, if there's a difference in what he do, if there's a difference in his education level. So let me put him over here. I tried summer school and he still failed. So what's wrong with the system? We have a broken system. Our system has been broken for years. Do y'all think I want some of, some of them kids working on me when I get old? When I go to the nursing home, you think I want them people, kids working for me? 
You think I want them kids cleaning my butt? You think I want them kids doing anything for me? They cannot read. They don't have a signature. They don't know math. They can't write. They don't know their history. They don't know where they came from. And how they got to where they are now. And yet and still we think. No, it's not even think. We let it be acceptable. It's acceptable. It is acceptable. Y'all have accepted the mere fact that our kids can't read. They can't do basic math. We've let our kids down. The system has let our kids down. Shelby County Schools, Memphis Shelby County Schools have let our kids down. The teachers have let our children down because they failed to do their jobs. Now, I'm not talking about all teachers because we have some teachers that are, are actually pretty good. They really care about the kids. But then we have some teachers that's just idiots. They're just there for a paycheck. Just give me a paycheck, let it be the reason. I did my job. I didn't say that eight hours. I didn't babysit your damn kids for eight hours. I did. Eight hours I babysit your damn kids. It's time for them to go home. I'm tired. I want to go home. I want to go have me a drink and do whatever it is. But they're not here for us. They're not here for the kids. They're not here for these babies. They got people in leadership right now in Frazier that not even qualified to be in a position. They're not qualified. Never been to college. Don't even know nothing about it, but they put them in positions to be, to be over our children. Now don't get it wrong, we all make mistakes. We all fall short of the glory of God every now and then, we do. I think this is her. She may be calling me. Let's see it, because I asked her to call. Tawana Murphy Show. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me put you on speed, because I was waiting on your call. Okay, go ahead, speak. Oh, hold on. I'm trying to get my speaker on. Why my speaker ain't working? <laughs> Debbie, I'm live. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, okay, now you can start. Go ahead. I've been waiting for you. Go, okay, I, you, they can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, uh, you have a question for me? Or? You, you know what? We, we, when we spoke yesterday, and, and, and you felt like I felt because I was upset about what's going on with these kids graduating, eight, ki eight high school seniors graduating from MLK Preparatory School, and the, the TCAP scores, and why they so low. And they so low this time that they won't even release them. Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's public information. Um, I guess just here in Frazier, we, we lack uh, a sense of direction. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have, well, I don't say quality leadership, but we don't have people that have the children's best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, and, I mean, everybody knows this about me. I was the only one where I had some other people that behind the scenes agree with me, but they wouldn't say it publicly, that the library that we're getting ready to build is in the, on James Road, but that's where they, they had that real bad blood at. Mm -hmm. And now they're going to put that, uh, that Rodney Bagel Park there and the library, but it's nowhere near any of the school. And we were like, why would we build you spend that type of money on a library. We've been waiting all this time to get the kids a decent library. Remember now, they've closed all the libraries in the school. Mm -hmm. So how are we saying our children are college-bound when they don't know what a library looks like? Right. So, right. you know, it's like we're making, we're not making uh, educated decisions. 
we're doing things under the table with being sold out and you know well I'm not going to say nothing and it doesn't as long as it doesn't bother roughing your feathers you're fine you know and we just can't keep doing it you know it would cost mm -hmm. it would cost you know right so with the big with Amy Wiley you know why is Frazier the only one supporting this lady this lady intentionally she has federal charges mm -hmm. for doing illegal things the African American men, she's actually hand, sit there hand picked and destroyed our family. And we think it's okay? Is she gave these people three times the time they deserve? Yeah. You have public knowledge. There's, you know, documentation to prove it. I just don't understand. I don't understand why we can't come together as a community and say, hey, let's do for once, let's do what's best for the kids. I think, in my personal opinion, it doesn't need to be anybody, uh, we need to uh, get someone else from the outside. Because everybody I talk to, you know, it's like, yeah, but, well, you know, if that's what they want, you know, what about the kids? They cannot speak for themselves. Y'all want to take none for them at 18, okay? You're saying they're not adults until they're 21. You all make, making adult decisions for them now. Mm -hmm. Why can't parents step up and say, hey, look, I care about my child's education. I want the family quality education. What do I need to do? And then we need to stop doing things. Uh, it's only 20 of us in this meeting, and we're making a decision for the entire community. That's not right. Mm -hmm. And then you don't tell the community what's going on. They don't know. Yeah. Just vote on it and keep it moving, and it's not fair. Because if you can ask those kids right now, we're going to put this uh, library right here by the Gill campus. The Gill campus, or should we say Gill campus, Southwest Gill campus now. Mm -hmm. You're going to have where you can walk to the library. You'll have at least five schools that's walking distance to that library. Yeah. Wouldn't that make a, that's, that's a better than put them down at the river and nobody can walk through it? Hmm. It's not accessible to Hollywood kids because they got their own library. Why would they walk past their library to come to this one? Yeah, you're right. I agree there. There's no it's no a school within five miles. I mean, and then you say, well, put them on the bus. Put your children on the bus. Hmm. Because what parent is going to put their child on that bus to go to the library unsupervised? There's going to be no adult supervision on that bus. No, it's not. The, people, the, uh, the older people that come in, you better believe they're scared. They, they're waiting on their stop so they can get out. Because these kids don't know how to behave. Yeah, they are. You you just took the, I was, I was just for the city. They're afraid of these kids. Yes. And, you know, anybody that's been in the school, school system here in town knows, okay, the, the education is different. We lose something to educate. They're afraid of it. Yeah. I have experienced so much, I mean, teacher abuse. I mean, teacher, this child is nose to nose with the instructor, yelling, screaming, cussing. At the instructor, nose to nose. Mm. I threaten. And because we, we have to make these numbers up, nothing's done to that child. We're going to take her, and it's like we're giving a uh, giving kids time out as they in the 12th grade. No. Yeah. So I think one thing we have got to get, oh, I think we need, one thing I really, really think we need to do, we need to market the schools around us that's doing well mm -hmm. and see what they're doing that we're not doing. Right. They have strong PTOs. Strong PTOs. I graduated from Mother High School. I wish you could see when they have a PTO meeting. Those parents are there. Wow. I mean, you cannot get a parking space. They're, they're parked all on the lawn everywhere. Everywhere. Well, do we really push PTO meetings? Do we make parents sign in like they do out there? No. No, we don't. They, they have a sign in. They sit home to, hey, you need to come, let's talk about your child. And what time is best for you? Do you want to do it 
doing school time or do you need to do it after hours? Mm-hmm. Have a choice. You got two, one or two days. You don't have to just say one day. You're right. We I agree. We got to parents accountable, and we got to start making sure that the people that we hire are credible. Because just like they said, we, uh, we share with county schools, they hired a principal that was a ballet teacher. <laughs> 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 wait, wait. They had a principal that was a ballet teacher? He went from a ballet teacher to a, a, a principal. Just so, so, so ba- basically what I just said earlier in the show is that they just hiring anybody. Yes. They just, you don't have to have any. You used to have, have to have it in your, uh, your student teaching stage. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, they would let you go on and teach and give you a waiver, or if you already had a college degree, you could, you know, but now you don't even have to have that. No, you don't. And it's sad, you know, so I, children are just being babysitted. They are being taught. This is sad. I'm so sorry. This is sad. And, and thank you for uh, speaking with me yesterday when we were talking about the eight kids that graduated from uh, MLK Preparatory Academy in Fraser. Um, I, had, I got some backlash from that, but I was um, grateful that you did um, share that with me. But you know what? I don't mind getting the backlash if I know that one child's life is being saved. It's worth the backlash. Mm-hmm. Lash me. Let's do something about these states. Give them a chance. You know how hard it is for us with a degree. Right. Right. And for these and kids... All these big night companies coming to Fraser. Oh, yeah, they're coming. But guess what? They're bringing some people from other states here for those jobs. Oh, they're not going to too much give them all to us. They're not going to give them to us. You know that. We, You know that. I know that. When they're not going to give it to us. No. They're not going to give those jobs to us. We're not qualified. We're not qualified for the jobs we already have here. Nike and all these other corporations are bringing people from the outside, allowing them to transfer here to Memphis. Mm-hmm. You're right. I agree. Our kids are unqualified. They can't even fill out a job application. Ooh, Lord, you know what? You know, you, you, hit the, you hit the nail on the head right there because I was helping uh, some of the high school kids last year fill out applications, and uh, one of the questions was sex. The girl put on there, I ain't had none yet. <laughs> I said, you got to be kidding me. I said, and they, then when you put down, you know, the, the family part of it, what you call it, said, the lady, the little girl said, uh, my dear and them, my grandma and them. And it's like, oh, God, these kids can't fill out applications. Yes, it, it, and it's a shame, you know, even though, you know, we have children that have these guidance counselors, they're not really guiding these kids. No. Because there's no way that a child gets $120,000 Scholarship money, and she don't go to college. Come on, what kind of scholarship are you? Right. That's ridiculous. All that money in scholarship, and she don't go to college. Did they take you to all these other colleges? They actually took them to UT Martin, where they actually got to experience college life. Just give it a chance. Yeah. But that's too much like right, though, Miss Pulliam. That is too much like, like, I got to get out of here. I got about two minutes left, and I got another show coming in behind me. Okay. But, but we'll talk. We'll talk. All right. And th- right. thank you so much. I appreciate you. All right. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right. All right. And, and that was Miss Pulliam, who was uh, a teacher over there at MLK. And, like, she, like I got heat from it yesterday. She, she's been getting heat from it, too. But... Uh, it is what it is. I don't mind taking the heat if, it, if, if it's for a good reason. I don't mind taking the heat if it's for a good reason. I got to get out of here because the Mike Williams show is up next. Um, thank y'all so much for watching. Thank y'all for tuning in. Tag and share the video. And, of course, the show is live on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Pine On Demand. What was it? Uh, YouTube Live, Facebook Live, and more. Remember, news is news. Facts is facts. Miss Ruby sung the blues. But Tawana going to bring you the news. Until next week, good night. And better tomorrow's. We're rolling with you, falling in love with SVPGD.